While the last two games I reviewed were positive, and I must be punished for missing the deadline for the Halloween episode, so here we are with The Quiet Man, a hot new full motion video game on PC and PlayStation 4, and generating buzz as the worst game of 2018. This isn't some indie shovelware like Life of Black Tiger either. The Quiet Man was published by Square Enix. It was shown off at an E3. The Final Fantasy guys looked at this garbo and said, yep, that should see the light of day. The game stars, I'll save us some time, we find out halfway through that his name is Dane. Dane here is wandering down a street when he comes across some Mexican gangsters. We find out that Dane is deaf as the game zooms into his perspective and the sound cuts out. And then we find out that Dane is Batman as he beats the asses of the gangsters, beats up an apartment building's worth of identical gang members, and has flashbacks to his mom being shot to death by criminals. I love how these weak-ass punches in the live-action bits are supposed to look like an instant knockout that flips the dude over. Oh, and half the cutscenes use CG wax figures instead of live-action for some reason. The big gimmick of The Quiet Man is that past the first three minutes or so, all of the audio in the game is muted and without subtitles. It's supposed to emulate the experience of the deaf protagonist, but the problems with this idea pop up almost instantly. Dane goes to a nightclub where he strikes up a conversation with this ponytailed guy, and we have no idea what any of this chat is about. I don't even know who this guy is. He's wearing a tux, seems friendly with Dane. I think this guy's getting married and Dane's in the wedding party. And then Dane thinks about a woman playing piano. Dane works for a black guy, again skipping ahead, his name is Tay, and they're... cops? Maybe? Anyway, Tay congratulates Dane on a job well done, Dane just sits there scowling and thinking about his mom's death again, and Tay gives Dane his next assignment, a ransom letter that he needs to investigate. Then Dane just warps to... this room. He finds a voodoo doll and sees photos of Tay with the woman, and then he pulls out his phone and he has a photo of the same woman, complete with flashbacks to her and romantic poses on a bed, and then he flashes back to his abusive dad for good measure, and then he's on a street kind of stalking this woman. I think she's Dane's girlfriend, but then Tay shows up at her door with flowers, so is this lady dating both Dane and Tay? And am I crazy, or does this girlfriend look exactly like Dane's mom? Yeah, I already have no idea what's going on. Like I said, the grand premise of the game is that the entire story is told without sound, and to be fair, it's not a bad concept. You can make an artistic point about how the finer details of the plot don't matter in a world where lots of people get hung up on and bitch for hours about plot minutiae, but they didn't build the game around the deafness mechanic. Almost every cutscene is just two people sitting in a room and talking, having a long conversation that we don't get to hear. Not only does it make the game boring as balls, since we go long stretches where nothing happens, but we get little to no information out of these scenes because they've done nothing to compensate for the lack of sound. For over six minutes, we sit here watching people we don't know, with history we're never told, talking about things we can't hear, about topics and situations that we know nothing about, and every damn character interaction in the game is just like this and equally incomprehensible. And the excuse that this mechanic was done to put us in Dane's shoes and have us experience the plot the same way he does is bullshit. Dane can read lips. He he always understands what people are saying, but we don't. He has extensive history with the other characters, each interaction has context that we don't get. The few times that sign language is used, we don't get captions for it. Hell, Dane talks fairly often, and we don't get captions for what he says, like we're expected to believe that deaf people don't know what they say when they speak. This gimmick may have worked if Dane had only just been struck deaf and hadn't adjusted yet, or if he didn't know any of these characters, that way his actions would be relatable and comprehensible to us. Instead, it plays like we're watching the pilot episode of any generic crappy crime drama just playing on a broken TV and we're desperately trying to decipher what's going on anyway. You know what else really doesn't help audience confusion? Casting one actress in two major roles. The woman that Dane is... dating guarding, whatever, is a singer at the nightclub where everyone hangs out. Charting new territory and pointlessness, having a musical number in a game with no sound, and the singer is played by the exact same actress as Dane's dead mom. 
I am not kidding, I checked the credits. Dane has flashbacks to his dead mom all the freaking time, and new players get confused because we have no idea which character he's flashing back to. So why is the singer played by Dane's mom in a game that's already designed to be confusing? Well, to steal a bit from Matthew Buck, SYMBOLISM! Dane wants to save the singer because it'll be like he can save his mom and finally get redemption. And being guilty over his mom's death is literally the only character trait that Dane has, so they'll beat you over the head with this metaphor over and over and over again. Anyway, the Mexican gang attacks the club and the singer is kidnapped by a man in a bird mask, so after about 40 shitting minutes of barely touching the controller for a tidal wave of cutscenes, you finally get some real gameplay as Dane sets out to save the singer. The actual gameplay is a dirt simple beat em up. X dodges, square punches, triangle does a kick that doesn't seem to do much, and circle usually doesn't do anything but sometimes it grabs a guy so you can punch him with the same animation about a dozen times. The game is a completely brain dead button masher. You charge into a group of enemies, mash the punch button to beat everyone to death, and pop a dodge every now and then if it looks like you're going to get hit. There are no items, there are no weapons, no special attacks, and there are a grand total of two enemy types in the entire game. You spend the entire game fighting basic goons who don't dodge, never maneuver, and have no special attacks, and the only speck of variety you get is every now and then you fight one guy who can block. It's seriously the exact same fight of pounding one attack button on one dude repeated over and over again. Hell, you even fight the same three identical Mexican dude character models for over half the game. There aren't any puzzles or exploration bits either. You beat up three or five guys in one room, you either walk into the next room or a cutscene drops into the next room, and you fight the same three to five guys in another empty room. This is all you do for two and a half hours. There is one level where you have to explore a room to find two clues, but it's only a minute long interlude in the 40 minute cutscene bonanza at the start of the game, like they suddenly remembered games have to have some interactivity. There's also a level that's literally five seconds long where you just walk down an empty sidewalk. No, I'm not kidding. Level starts. Level ends. I'm still not entirely sure how you're supposed to fight enemies who block. Sometimes your hits land, sometimes they don't, there's no counter move or guard block. I think you're just meant to wail on them and hope that some hits get through, which leads to you getting your ass kicked. Eventually I discover that if you press L2, Dane enters some kind of ultra instinct mode where all of your attacks automatically land regardless of blocking enemies and no enemy hits can hurt you until you kill someone. I'm not entirely sure how the ultra instinct works though, sometimes pressing L2 always triggers it, sometimes I have to wait a few seconds between uses, sometimes it seems like I have to land some hits to use it again, all I know is it seems to have infinite uses, and it insta-kills everything but the end bosses. It even wrecks the shit of the Birdman mini-boss that you fight three times. The game's combat animations are full of jarring errors. If you knock an enemy into a wall, Dane will launch heavier attacks to knock them into obstacles, and Dane will just teleport instantaneously between positions to launch these attacks. Often someone's arm or leg will just phase entirely through other solid objects. There's a point where you can get the camera to phase through a wall and see empty void on the other side. Oh, and if you try and run into a solid object, Dane will freeze in mid-run animation. The camera shakes violently while you're in the middle of attacks, I never figured out the significance of the lens flares, and there are several fights where live-action cutscenes play over the combat so that you can't see what you're doing. Oh good, another flashback to Dane's mom, that was worth blocking my view of the combat. You spend about half an hour beating up three to four Mexican dudes, at one point getting saved by the ponytail guy. This is where I finally figured out that Dane and Tay aren't cops, they're gangsters operating out of the nightclub. Dane never seems to do any investigating, so I guess that ransom note was actually a kidnapping threat on the singer. Okay, now I get what's going on. Though, now that I know this is a gang war, I wonder why Dane doesn't kill any of the thugs or get them arrested, instead content to punch them out for a few hours, accomplishing nothing so they can come back the next night. Dane loses track of the kidnapper's van and just seems to wander aimless through through the city until he comes across the apartment building from the start of the game because yes, they recycle an entire level. Only this time, Dane finds a stalker shrined to the singer and has more mom flashbacks. It looks like Dane is friends with a higher ranking cop who seems to cover for Dane's activities and they go way back because he comforted Dane after his mother died- OH COME ON! I WAS JOKING ABOUT THE BATMAN COMPARISON, DANE HAS HIS OWN COMMISSIONER GORDON?! We're around the game's halfway point, and I don't see why people have been complaining that this game is confusing. Dane's a gangster trying to save his girlfriend from a rival gang, it wasn't that hard to figure out. Dane returns to his apartment where he finds a Birdman mask and a bloody dress like what his mom was wearing when she died. 
And then Dane wakes up in the nightclub where it turns out he was the one who beat up all his friends and kidnapped the singer. And then he gets a video of the singer tied up and gagged by another Birdman. Well, I had a good run, but I'm back to no idea what's going on. What, so out of nowhere the last half hour has been a hallucination? Dane helped kidnap his girlfriend only to have to rescue her from the guy that he helped to kidnap? What? It's like they were deathly afraid that the story was making too much sense. Dane is sent a map, so you beat up more Mexican people until you run into the guy who killed Dane's mom. After an infuriating boss fight that I'll get to later, Dane machine gun punches the guy through a window and then leaps out after him. For a game that's tried to have realistic looking combat animations, this is too cartoonish for the Arkham games. But Dane is prevented from killing the guy by, what else, another flashback to his mom. Well, I hope that you enjoyed getting to actually play the game because we settle in for 12 minutes of cutscenes. The singer just teleports to Dane, they escape only to abruptly warp into an alley where Day orders Dane killed and re-kidnaps the singer for some reason. The cop shows up to save Dane and after a long, pointless car ride chat, they go to save the singer again. Yeah, we have to sit on ass for 12 minutes while all of that slowly plays out in total silence. I was going to say that you finally start fighting different enemies as you fight Dane's gang instead of endlessly cloned Mexican guys, but then I noticed that most of the gangsters are either black or some shade of brown skin, so the game's record is intact. Uncharted would be proud. The boss fights are hands down the worst part of the gameplay. There are three boss battles, the guy who killed Dane's mom, the ponytail guy, and Tay, and your attacks just phase right through them with no feedback. You're eventually given a hint that you beat the mom's killer by dodging his charging attack, which you have to do in a ludicrously specific way or else it doesn't count, but Ponytail and Tay are just left to blindly guess what to do. I eventually clued in on accident that if you dodge an enemy's attack with super precise timing and maybe hit the attack button as well, I never figured it out all the way, Dane will do a perfect dodge and land a hit on an enemy which opens up these bosses for attacks. It's sheer trial and error to pull this off since the bosses are terrible at telegraphing attacks. There is no kind of a tutorial explaining the perfect dodge mechanic, so unless you got it to work on accident on one of the enemies and figured out what was going on among all the other pre-rendered animations, I have no idea how you figure this out. This is probably a good time to point out what happens when you die. You're shown a little cutscene of a close-up of Dane's mom shoved right in your face smiling down on you, and then the game reloads back at the fight where you died. And every time one of these cutscenes appears, it royally pisses me off. Part of it's because there are already about 15,000 annoying flashbacks of this woman cramming Dane's Oedipus motivation down your throat. Part of it's the fact that a big smiling face blowing kisses at you when you die is incredibly patronizing. And part of it's because the game is so fucking pleased with itself bashing you over the skull with this woman's face screaming symbolism it thinks it's so damn brilliant like it's the first piece of media to come up with this idea and every time these scenes pop up i want to put my fist through the screen shit There are four different times through this last stretch of the game that things grind to a halt so Tay can give another speech that you can't frickin' hear. God, shut up and let me punch him already! Tay suddenly remembers that he has a gun and he shoots the cop, and then we get a flashback fully explaining the game's backstory. Tay and the Mexican guy got into an argument over a pair of shoes when Tay pulled a gun. Dane was walking by and ran over to say hi to Tay, causing a scuffle that gets his mom shot. The protagonist's motivation is that his mom got shot over a pair of shoes. The only thing dumber than that is this stupid little kid who ran up to and yelled at a guy very obviously holding a gun. To cope with his mother's death, Dane invents an imaginary bird mask man to protect his mom, and in the present, Dane puts on the bird mask for the last few fights of the game. I guess the implication is that Dane has a split personality and that's why he hallucinated those levels from earlier. 
cheese and rice served with chicken chimichangas. I get it. Dane misses his bomb. I got it. The last 50 flashbacks. Stop shoving this dead bitch's face down my throat. I don't mean to fixate on this, but how many damn mother flashbacks does this game have? across a two and a half hour game that averages out to a mom flashback every five minutes, not counting flashbacks to the singer. Is it understandable now why this woman's mere appearance pisses me off? Dane fights Tay until Tay again remembers that he has a gun and he shoots Dane in the head. And then Dane gets superpowers. Yep, Dane is the crow now. Figure that one out. This comes completely out of left field in a game that has absolutely zero other supernatural elements. Dane just abruptly comes back to life with super speed, super strength, and the ability to roundhouse kick people to death. Roadhouse. 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 Dane beats Tay to death as the game keeps cutting back to their chat at the start of the game because they did such a shitty job establishing their friendship that they only have one scene to flash back to. Having finally saved his mom through proxy, Dane screams to the sky in orgasm. I'd like to say it plays out really dumb without the sound, but it's not much better with sound. We'll get to that. And then the cop also comes back to life, and we find out that he was the other Birdman who kidnapped the singer. So how in the hell did the singer show up unharmed at the Mexican guy's place if somebody else- You know what, screw it. Dane punches out the cop, they both fall down, maybe they're dead, I honestly don't care. And then an unbearably pretentious song about escaping reality plays over the end credits. Because I guess that was the point of the game this whole time? <laughs> Yeah, the player's rage lies beyond words, too. What the hell was the point of that? Any of that? The whole game! So, the end. Except not really. After the credits, the game rewinds to various key scenes with the sound restored, and it cuts to show the singer arranging her own kidnapping with the cop to escape the mafia. So congratulations, Dane, your Oedipus complex prevented an innocent woman from escaping the mob. Dumbass! This is a teaser for The Quiet Man Answered, a second playthrough with the sound turned back on that was patched in a week after the game's release, and the game had a countdown to the patch's launch when it came out, so they planned on adding the sound back in from the get-go. In theory, promising a second playthrough that adds more subplots to the game isn't a bad way to sustain hype, but so many people found the base game to be so thoroughly incomprehensible that this teaser plays more like, THE GAME WILL MAKE SENSE THIS TIME! I don't buy for a minute that the game without sound that patched in sound was written or shot with the deafness mechanic in mind. Through the entire game, people carry on normal conversations, and nobody acts like Dane is deaf. The cop talks to Dane with his back turned, making sure that he won't pick up a word that he's saying. I truly believe this game was written and acted as a run-of-the-mill crime drama story, and then they tacked on the deafness mechanic after the fact, either deciding that the game needed a sales hook or just realizing that the game sucked and it needed some kind of a gimmick to look deep. As a result, you're forced to do one intentionally boring and confusing playthrough before you get the actual game. So, let's play through this shitty game again for you people. 
and let's see if the answered playthrough is worth it. Pretty much everything that I deduced about the plot was correct. Dane and Tay are gangsters with a rivalry with the foreign gang, only on the second playthrough we learn that the gang is Dominican. The singer's name is Lala, and she's dating Tay, she has no relationship with Dane at all, which makes his obsession and stalking extra kinds of creepy. The main thing that I got wrong is that the cop is not Dane's friend on the force, he's Dane's abusive dad, who blames Dane for the mother's death and throws it in his face every single chance that he gets. You can understand my confusion thinking they were friends given we almost never see the cop in live action and his character model is always smiling! This is a problem that I didn't really notice until my second playthrough. Every character model except for Tay has little to no facial animations. Animated Dane, Lala, and Cop almost always have their faces frozen in the same static expression. The cop's lines are almost painful to listen to. He's written as an abusive parent so over the top it's cartoonish, complaining, I don't want Dane processing his plane! That eight-year-old should be miserable forever! And telling young Dane to his face that he hated him before the mom died because he took all the mom's attention. A better actor may have been able to sell this abysmal dialogue, but the deliveries are flat as can be and he doesn't emote at all. This scene, he's yelling at his son and his body language doesn't convey anger at all. The dude's a complete cipher on the death playthrough. The sad thing is, the game actually has a pretty decent soundtrack. And Tay's actor gives a pretty solid performance once you can freaking hear them. About Lala. This is about us. We've been family for years. And nothing's ever come between us until tonight. Until her? Apart from that, though, the second playthrough is somehow even more boring than the first. Thing is, I was kind of engaged with the game on my first run because I was paying close attention and trying to decipher out the plot, but once you know what's going on, the second playthrough is Boring! It's just a bog-standard crime story about a bland-ass, one-dimensional character and the plot device woman devoid of personality or agency that he has to save. There is nothing else going on. The sounded playthrough also gives us this line of dialogue from a cop radio transmission when Lala is kidnapped. We're just going off a chatter right now. I don't want the whole goddamn ACLU up our dicks just because we infringe someone's right to be an asshole. You know, Angry Joe was wondering if the game was made by some angry racist guy since you spend the entire game beating up minorities. I'm starting to think he had a point. I also opted to try the game's hard difficulty. It's the same as the normal difficulty, only with about a third of the health bar. The guys holding machetes and the bosses who need to be dodged with ludicrously perfect timing to make them vulnerable, they now have attacks that kill you in one hit. Luckily, you can change the difficulty at any time once you realize how broken the hard mode is. The sounded playthrough explains that Lala arranged her kidnapping with the cop to escape the mob, and then it's implied that the cop played the situation to goad Tay and Isaac into a gang war, thus killing everyone responsible for his wife's death. This, however, tacks on its own plot holes about why Lala appears after the Isaac boss fight rather than making her getaway, or why she never attempts to explain the situation while Tay and Dane go to war over her. It feels like that entire arranged kidnapping plot point was thought up after most of the game had already been shot because it only comes up in one scene. Even with the sound turned on, the game never explains what was up with that Dane actually helped the kidnapping bit or why Dane abruptly gets superpowers. Neither of the game's most confusing ass pull plot holes are so much as mentioned. It's explained that Dane's Birdman persona is a quite literal superhero that he invented called Quiet Man, an alter ego that Dane fully embraces for the final levels. So even though I wrote those jokes long before getting to this point, this is indeed a superhero story. Even though nothing superhero related enters the story until the last few minutes. I think that the game is trying to take the piss out of superhero mythology, casting characters like Batman and Spider-Man as repressed man-children who only beat up bad guys out of frustration that they can't save their loved ones. Dane is mocked by just about everyone in the game for having such a stupid and simplistic motivation, and he easily just up and quits being the quiet man once he gets his revenge and processes his mother's death properly. Thing is, though, Batman and Spider-Man fight crime because 
because they're moral characters who want to do good for the people in the world around them. Their loved ones' deaths were just the calls to action that set them on the path to heroism. Dane just punches out gangsters because he's mad about his mom 24-7, and that is literally the only thing he's got going on in his life. He's a selfish, laughable, unlikable, boring-ass, one-dimensional character. If they were going for a jab at the superhero genre, they failed miserably at it because they didn't understand what they were riffing, and they wrote the most shallow protagonist imaginable. And there's also the fact that Batman only flashes back to his dead parents maybe twice per any given series. The last stretch of the game is really nonsensical with the sound turned on. Tay keeps trying to make amends with Dane, who refuses to explain what's going on and insists on betraying his friend for no reason. When you fight Ponytail Guy, whose name is Bad Cock, incidentally, he yells at Dane for breaking his nose and breaking his car window after the kidnapping. Even though one of those happened in the level Dane hallucinated, and the other happened in the flashback to what really happened. No wonder players found the plot confusing! The game can't keep its own story straight! And then this happens after Dane lets go of his quiet man persona. I can't... Why can't I hear? What? Why can't I hear? You can't hear because you've been deaf your whole life, dumbass! What is that line even supposed to mean? Symbolism has to be comprehensible, douchebag! Cop Dad tries to kill Dane because he's still wittering on with his everything's your fault crap, and he's also obsessed with Lala as a stand-in for the dead mom whose death he can't accept. Again, you could argue this is their take on the villainous dark version of the superhero trope. They knock each other out, the pretentious song at the end is recut with flashbacks of the dad because I guess this was supposed to be his story now, and there's a new stinger after the credits where Dane gets out of prison and starts to reconcile with his father and nobody cares because they're both gigantic asses. Now, the game is over. The Quiet Man is complete shit. There isn't a single thing that it gets right. The gameplay is literally nothing but single button mashing to fight one cloned enemy about a hundred times. The story is a bog standard crime drama centered around a one dimensional and unlockable protagonist. And the game is so insufferably pretentious, like it's in deep denial over its own simplicity. The deafness mechanic was obviously thrown in after the fact to give the game a pointless gimmick in exchange for ruining the performances and rendering key parts of the plot in incomprehensible, the game is unreasonably proud of building its plot around symbolism so basic that it was the plot of last week's episode of Magnum P.I. The plot is so full of random plot points and themes that don't connect, I'd swear the game was constantly rewritten as it was being shot, it pulls messages out of thin air to bullshit you into thinking that the game is deep, and it out of nowhere takes a major detour to take a mean-spirited and inaccurate pot shot at the superhero genre. The game's not only bad, it's the kind of bad that royally pisses you off. Off. That smug dumbass at the party who mouths off to everyone in earshot, convinced he's the smartest guy in the room. The only good thing I'm taking away from this game is the PS4 theme that comes included, the creepy stalker shrine with your icons replaced with damaged sheets of paper and ominous music. It's not a bad atmospheric Halloween wallpaper, except it reminds you that you paid money for the quiet man. But in keeping with the deafness theme, let me close out my thoughts via sign language.